Hey guys, it's Shaylin and I'm here today with another writing video. So today I'm super excited about the topic because we're going to be talking about how to write romance because you know what day it is, the Friday after Valentine's Day. Maybe on Valentine's Day you were busy celebrating love, whereas today you have time to watch writing craft videos. A uh, video I've been really wanting to make recently because I've been writing a lot more romance in my work over my past few projects. It used to be something that I didn't really touch in my writing at all, and then it just became something that I started writing more and including more, and I'm currently gearing up to write a fantasy romance. So today we're going to be talking about writing romance. I do want to make a little distinction here. In this video I really am talking about how to write romantic relationships, not how to write romance as a genre. Romance as a genre genre is kind of its own beast. It kind of has its own genre conventions that can be quite specific. My experience writing romance is usually in the context of other genres, so in the context of like fantasy, um, or actually mostly in the context of literary fiction. So I'm really talking about how to write romantic relationships. Obviously this can apply to romance as a genre, but I'm not going to be talking about the conventions of romance as a genre. There are a lot of different ways that you can include romantic relationships in your work. It can be in a romance book, it could be just a love story in another type of book, it could be to just explore this type of relationship but it's not really a romance or love story arc. So that leads to the first point which is there needs to be something that makes this dynamic compelling. There needs to be something beyond just these two people meet and they fall in love. A love story on its own isn't inherently interesting just because now love is in the mix. I think it can be easy to kind of put love as like a pedestal emotion and human experience and think that therefore it's inherently compelling in a narrative, but that's not true. In fact, love is probably the most commonly written about emotion or human experience. You know, there's a reason we keep coming back to it over and over, but it also means that you do have to put some thought into the dynamic that you're creating in order to make it compelling because just having two characters who fall in love with each other isn't en enough, really. There has to be something beyond that. You know, when I think about my own love story in real life, when I think about me and my girlfriend, I love our love story. It's perfect. I wouldn't change a single thing about it. You couldn't write a book about it because there's no story, there's no narrative, there's nothing that makes it narratively compelling. It's compelling to me in real life because it's my life and I'm happy. A kind of conflict-free, drama-free story where two mature independent people meet and fall in love and it's kind of just simple like that. That's not really, that's not a story. That's not to knock my own love story because I'm personally very happy that we didn't have the things that would make it a compelling narrative because that would mean conflict. Falling in love isn't inherently a story just because these two people fall in love. Think carefully about why these people, why this story, why is this a love story that's worth telling? Because what makes a good love story in real life is not the same as what makes a good love story in fiction. This is one reason why when I'm actually writing romance, like not just writing about romantic relationships as like a form of character study, but writing like a romance, I actually prefer to do it in a fantasy context. And I think this is one reason why romanticy has become so popular because I think a lot of people are drawn to this, which is the fact that you can kind of tinker and play with the dynamics, create conflict and tension points within this romance that you couldn't have in real life. I don't think I was clear enough about this of how to make the dynamic compelling and how to make it a story. You have to kind of look into places for this. There's the external situation and then there's the internal complexity. And you really want there to be both, you know? It can be easy to just think about why the dynamic is compelling from an external perspective, like, oh, they're in this forbidden situation that has really high stakes and that's really interesting. But what's the internal emotional component that's really important. So you want there to be both. You want there to be this external compelling situation that probably has like interesting stakes, but that equally needs to be paired with a reason why this is necessary for the larger story. You don't want the romance to be included in the story just because, I don't know, romances are fun or even feel like it's a default thing because we see a romantic subplot in so many books, it's so common. You want it to be done intentionally and feel like a necessary part of this story that could not be extricated from the story without the story being fundamentally like not working. And th the way to do that is really to make the romance a crucial part of how we are exploring and revealing this character. Um, I think that that is really really important. If we don't feel like the romance is a necessary avenue for 
exploration of this character and that is a necessary angle of the larger story. It falls really flat and it feels like it was just included as a default because romance is a common part of so many stories. And you don't want that. I don't think that romance should just inherently be included in every book, you know, because it's common. I think it really should be included because there's purpose to it. And if there's no purpose to it, then it doesn't need to be there. But if it's going to be there, then it needs to be earned. So this builds on a point too, which I've kind of already touched on. I always do this. I always script my points and then I start merging them. But bear with me, okay? Which is that you have to make the romance a story. So how do you do that? With conflict. So I guess I should rename part two this point, you need to have conflict. So if we remember the three types of conflict that you can have in a story, societal, interpersonal, and internal, you can think about how all of these might come into play in your romance. You should have probably at least two, and you definitely want to have an internal conflict. An example of a societal conflict in a romance would be something like if you're writing a queer romance in a, you know, setting where that's not permissible by society. A lot of the time societal conflicts are what we would label as like forbidden love, you know? For whatever reason, societally, this relationship is not permitted. I love queer forbidden romance, but it's not forbidden because they're queer, but for other reasons. Like, this is how you lose the time war by Amal El Mortar and Max Gladstone. I bet a bunch of you guys have read that book. It's, it's about two time agents on different sides of a time war. And so they're trying to destroy each other's timelines in order to win this time war, but then they end up falling in love with each other. And then there's also interpersonal conflict. Interpersonal conflict is a very important part of the majority of stories. This is the conflict that's happening between characters. So there may be interpersonal conflict between your two characters, or there could be other conflicts in a larger web of relationships. Say the setup is that the main character is having an affair with their best friend's fiance. So there's a lot of interpersonal conflict here because there are a lot of close personal relationships at stake. So the thing that's threatening the relationship here isn't societal, it's relationship driven. And then internal conflict is really, really key because this is what's gonna give your character a character arc that moves alongside the romantic arc. This is what the character must overcome within themselves in order to make this relationship work. It's how do they have to grow if they're going to make this work with this person. By having this internal conflict, you're making the character arcs and the romantic arcs intrinsically interlocked and inseparable from each other. But ideally, you want some external conflict of, you know, societal or interpersonal conflict happening as well. So the next point, since we're on the topic of conflict, is to think of this push and pull between connection and conflict. So what makes a fictional romance compelling is that there's some type of conflict, whether that's societal, internal, in interpersonal, internal, or some combination of the three, that are keeping these characters apart. So then it's very beautiful if the relationship works out in the end because we get to see the connection overcome the conflict. Then it can also be tragic on the flip side if the conflict is what inevitably overcomes these characters' connection. And you can kind of write it in a structure of alternating between these two things. So you can have a moment of connection between the characters, where they build a closer bond, or their, you know, their initial maybe negative impressions of each other are subverted, or they get closer, they, you know, have some kind of shared vulnerability. And then you can have a test where they're put in some kind of conflict situation that tests this connection they've just built. And sometimes they may pass that test, and sometimes they might fail at it, putting them a step backwards. You'll get to the point where there's kind of an ultimate test where we see in the end if their connection will overcome the conflict or if the conflict is what's going to win in the end and we're gonna have more of a tragic story. Which is very mean if you do that, but you do you. My next tip is to think about the main themes of your story and explore them through the relationship. I think one way to add a lot of depth to a romance is to use it to explore the core themes of your story. You don't want the romance to feel like it's tacked on. You want it to be an integral part of the story, and this is something I really thought about when I was writing a romance in a literary fiction book, which aren't two genres that always go together. And I think the keys to that were making it integral with the character arc and also making it integral with the themes. However, I think you can do this in any genre. Each character can have kind of a different relationship to this theme. When these characters are brought together, their relationship can allow both of them to grow in different ways regarding the same central theme. Or if it's a negative character arc, they might regress. I have this in my book I'm currently editing, The Animal Sense, where the romantic relationships are not positive. It's not a love story. These people just have messed up romantic connections with each other. And so through their romantic connections, we're exploring central themes 
that relate to all the characters. And yes, more than two. Uh, it's not polyamory. That would actually solve a lot of people's problems in this book. It's just disastrous. But they're kind of all regressing through how we're exploring these themes rather than growing. That's also possible. But you know, if you're writing a romance, then it's probably going to be a positive growth. So in my novel, Holding a Ghost, which is essentially a love story, one of the central ideas is kind of like, what version of yourself is real? Is it the version that's in your art? Is it how other people see you? Both of the main characters of this book have kind of different relationships to this theme. They both bring that into the relationship and they can both kind of grow in their own separate ways regarding this theme by being together. Building on that, I think it can also help to identify any central motifs or kind of vehicles that you'll use to explore the relationship. I think that this can give the relationship a really unique feeling and make it feel really unique to the story and like something we haven't seen before. If you have a really specific motif that you can use to explore this relationship in Holding a Ghost, both the characters are artists in, in different ways. The main character is a photographer and the, the love interest is, you know, an artist. The art becomes a recurring motif in their relationship because they're both kind of using each other's art in order to understand that person's feelings for them. That's like how the relationship is kind of shown in this book is through their art. There's one thing I didn't talk about in the video that I felt I wanted to touch on, which is actually crafting a compatible couple on the page and what does that look like? Because obviously if the characters don't have a compelling chemistry and compatibility, then there's not a lot of interest in their actual dynamic. So how do you craft compatible characters? Compatibility between two fictional characters in a romance is very different from what compatibility looks like from two people in real life. You know, I don't think I've ever been reading a book and been thinking, well, how is this going to work? They don't have compatible lifestyles or daily routines. What I like to think of is how you're creating thematic compatibility. And I think the best way to do that is to kind of create a sense of mutual growth. So where whatever flaws the protagonist is actively struggling with in the book, we can see those flaws be challenged and then see them starting to grow from the balance that the love interest provides and vice versa. So the love interest will equally be challenged with their own flaws and based on this sense of balance from the protagonist, there will be a, a, a sense of active growth for them as well. If we can even see like this kind of sense of healing from both characters, that can be really, really powerful and it gives a lot of meaning to their interactions on the page because rather than their interactions just being, you know, conversations to show that they have chemistry, that chemistry is actually a path for growth for both of the characters and I think that that is really the key to creating compatible characters is to think almost more spiritually or more thematically of how they're compatible in this kind of emotional thematic sense and how it's going to lead to growth for both characters. My next tip is to be really, really intentional with the physicality, the specific details that you use to describe the love interest. That's descriptions of their features, how they move. Really, anytime the love interest is in a scene, being really, really intentional with that because picking out these really subtle, small, very fine details, it shows a level of attention and that shows a level of attraction. The love interest is just doing the, some mundane task. It doesn't matter what it is. Say they're making a cup of tea, but we're really, really carefully attuned to exactly how they're ripping open the tea bag and these really subtle nuances of how they move. That shows that the main character is paying attention really closely. That really shows, especially if the details are appealing, you know, if they're off-putting details, then that doesn't really show a level of attraction. But if they are, even in subtle ways, appealing details, I think that that's just a better way of showing attraction than what can often happen, which is when they're first introduced, we just get a three paragraph long, look how hot this person is description. And it's like, okay, yeah, they're pretty great. But I think if your character is paying really close attention to really subtle details and what they look like and how they move, that really shows attraction throughout the story. And you can, you can also build a sense of attraction if maybe there is an initial attraction between these characters, but then there starts to be. And we can show that through this increase in very sensory or appealing details that the character is noticing about the love interest. 
Next step, I think it's really important to think about the why in terms of why these people are falling in love with each other. Romances really fall flat for me when there's no compelling and specific reason that I can identify for why these people fell in love other than they're both attractive, so we're told, and they're both there. Like it can be easy to use a character's physical appearance as a shortcut for an emotional connection. Like, oh, they're both super hot, so of course they should be together okay, I don't really care. That's not really captivating my interest. From both of these characters' perspectives, why this person? Why is this relationship so meaningful? You know when your friend is like, oh my god, I started dating the best guy. And she's talking up her new man, and then eventually it's time to meet him. Having a little get together, your friend brings over her new boyfriend, and you're like, why though? And you see them interact, and you're like, you guys seem to have no chemistry, no shared interests, no nothing why you don't want the romance in your book to feel like that where the whole time the reader is like literally why you don't want it to feel like these people are just in a relationship now because of proximity because the other person was there you want there to be some deeper emotional spiritual connection here that really sells this is like an extremely important powerful love story that is more important than just your friend bringing over some random man and you being like okay that was the most underwhelming introduction of my life so one way to do that one question that i often like to ask myself about any relationship i'm writing is what about themselves can these characters reveal to each other that they've never revealed to anyone else? Or like what qualities do they see in each other that no one else has ever seen in them? Vulnerability is a really great way to build genuine connection between your characters, especially if that vulnerability is a vehicle for them both to grow. And if it's vulnerability that maybe they've never been able to share with anyone else. If it's something that's so deep down that sharing it actually has really high emotional stakes for them. To have moments of emotional vulnerability with each other really convinces the reader on the page that this is quite an important connection for these characters because it's actually quite an important moment in their lives. You know, these moments should be hard for the characters. They should be moments where something has to be overcome. But that's, I think, where the payoff comes from and it's what makes the relationship feel really earned and powerful in the end. Another thing that I really like to ask, I think this is a question that I've started asking of my characters in a lot of contexts, not just when I'm writing romance, but especially when writing romance, is what is this character's relationship to being loved? And there are some other tangents, questions like, you know, what is their relationship to heartbreak, if that's relevant to the story or to their life? What's their relationship to sex, if that's relevant to their life and to the story? There can be some other related questions that can offshoot from that, but at the core of it is, what is this character's relationship to being loved? And I think that that is something really, really important to ask because ideally by the end, their relationship to being loved has been challenged and has also changed. Your character's relationship to being loved may not be super healthy or positive or optimistic at the beginning. You're gonna show that being challenged on the page and show them changing and growing. As a final like general closing off point, just remember that we should be learning about both characters through this relationship. Both characters need to feel like fully rich, developed, living people. When you're writing a romantic relationship, it is a character study of the relationship and also of both characters as individuals, not just the protagonist. We don't want a situation where just the protagonist grows and we just learn about the protagonist and the love interest is just there to facilitate that. That can make your love interest feel like a device and not a real person. What are we learning and revealing about both of these characters through the trajectory of their relationship? This is something that you can do in any type of relationship. Any type of relationship in your story, whether it's familial, whether it's platonic, whether it's romantic, can be a vehicle to explore both characters through this relationship. But I think with a romance, especially if the romance is key to the story and it's core to the story and this is a really important relationship, this is such an important thing to look at. So that's all for this video. That is everything that I wanted to say on writing romance. I hope these tips were helpful for you in crafting compelling relationships in your work. Again, I will leave my video on writing compelling character relationships below because I think it's a really important pairing to this video and it has some more general tips that you can apply to any type of relationship. Pretty much all the points in that video are really important for writing romantic relationships as well. So that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye!
you know, I think being really closely washing someone's hands, I think that that's very shows that you're like attracted to them. But maybe that's just because I'm gay. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs>